Uh, today's demonstration is called the bottomless bottle, and I want to uh, give you some uh, thoughts on about how to set it up, and then once I get it going, then I'll talk more about the, about the uh, reaction and the energy relationship that occur in this particular reaction. All right, I have a gallon water bottle that I cut the bottom out. I have a stopper in here that I just heated a glass rod in, and I just melted the top and then I jammed it down in there nice and tight. I have a good seal. Even if I don't have a good seal, that's going to be all right because there's an opening down here. So the hydrogen is lighter than air and it's going to force, the ox it's going to force all the atmospheric air out of here. All right, and it's, you know, you kind of have to practice this one to kind of know how long it takes. So I've done this many, many times, and so I know about how long it takes. Now, if the worst thing that could possibly happen is that when you light it immediately, then everything goes at once. You didn't get enough hydrogen in there. So if you went three minutes, then you need to go five minutes or six minutes. So it's not, uh, it's not a big deal. And that's, again, the... Same old reason why you practice stuff, because every bottle has a different volume depending on where you cut it off and so forth, and depending on how much uh, aluminum you use. I just take aluminum foil and tear it up and then twist it into little strips like this, and then I'm going to drop those down into my volumetric flask. Now you want to use a volumetric flask because this gets very hot. It's very exothermic. And I have an ice bucket right next to it. So if it starts to look like it's bubbling up into the neck of the flask, I'm going to immediately, boom, put it right in the ice water. And that's going to cool it down again. And there's also a calcium chloride drying tube here. So any excess water vapor that gets bubbled up and that gets passed through here. So I can actually get dry hydrogen in here pretty easily this way. Now, when I'm doing it and with my students, I don't worry about the calcium chloride drying tube because I've done it so many times, it doesn't seem to make a difference one way or the other. So again, that's an option that you have uh, you know, as, a, as a demonstrator to decide which, which, which direction you want to go with. Um, when I do this with my students, I have them, I have a, uh, either a milk jug that has a nice handle on it, or I, have, I actually uh, got some kids to bring in a, a two-gallon kitty litter uh, container that I cut the bottom off, drilled a hole, put the stopper in, and so forth. And so I always ask for a volunteer. This is the very first thing I do on the very first day of school whenever we meet. And of course, I don't tell them it's a bottomless bottle explosion. If they ask me what's going to happen, I say something very interesting. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just take the stopper off here. And I'm going to drop the aluminum in. Maybe move this back a little bit so you can get a good shot of that. And you see immediately it starts to bubble. Okay, now I've got air in here, so I want to get rid of that. Now you can st I start to see a little smoke coming out of there. That's really steam. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here first. Cool it down a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to hold this in. All right, just because I didn't get quite the right size stopper. This is a three and I probably should have had a two. All right, so it would fit down in there a little bit more. But I always like to hold it, just so that uh, when, I, when, I, when it's filling with hydrogen, then I don't have to worry. I know that I've got a good seal. And you see, boy, that's really going. That's really kicking in. So that's why you need the ice. Now, it's barely warm where my hand is, but it's still kind of warm. If it gets too hot, I'm just going to put it right in the sink. All right? And so, again, now notice how the, the sodium hydroxide solution is turning black. Well, it turns out that regular aluminum foil has some carbon in it, and that makes it strong. And because it has carbon in it, that's where the black comes from. So it's not pure aluminum foil. And again, household materials, that's sodium hydroxide. They can get that in any grocery store, Home Depot, Lowe's, aluminum foil they got in their kitchen. So I do not tell them what I have here. I said, look, I always reserve the right not to tell you what I'm using for materials. If they really persist, I go, oh, it's aluminum foil and sodium chloride. And sure enough, the next day, two or three kids will come and say, it's not sodium chloride. And I take all the bottles that are labeled so they have no idea what I've made. I make all these solutions in secret 
So they don't know what I've used because some of them are smart enough, you know, they'll turn the bottle around, oh, sodium hydroxide. Now, with the, with the internet, they can look that up and they can find all the common names for it. So I just don't want that hassle, all right? And again, they don't know enough chemistry to even do it, you know, have any idea what this is going to go, how hot this is getting. All right, that's mostly gone. So that should be pretty good. All right. Now, I'm going to just take the... Uh, tubing off here. And when I have the student do this, they put their finger on the top. I clear the bench. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. And I'm ambidextrous. I can use both hands. All right. And there you go. Now, that's perfect. And again, I tell the kids, hold it out away from you. You know, if you've got a big basketball player there, hey, you know, that's like six feet away from some of them. They got long arms, <laughs> you know. And so you can get it out there. And the more hydrogen you get in here, the longer the suspense goes. Now, as that flame starts to get smaller and smaller, I start to back away. Okay? It does not make a loud noise, by the way. Can we dim the lights a little bit more even? And I tell them if they're real quiet, sometimes they can hear it whistle. As long as it's burning at the top, still not got the right stoichiometry yet. Hello. <laughs> All right. So if we can look over here on our chart. And again, if I were doing this in my AP class, and they love to see demos again. So if you have a second year chemistry course, whether it's AP or whatever, then you can scale it up. And I think Bob has mentioned that several times, that you can do more with it. You know, you can have them calculate the bond energies. And with the way the fuels are going now, this is going to become a very, very important reaction in the future because it does not contribute to the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. There is no carbon that results from this reaction, but yet it has a lot of energy. And the question is, how do we get it? You know, this delta H for this reaction uh, is negative 242. So that means in order to split the water, we've got to add 242. And so that's the problem. Now, I've traveled all over the country. If you're in, like, Oklahoma, Kansas, Arizona, New Mexico, there are lots of places where solar panels, photovoltaics, could generate a tremendous amount of electricity. And you could use electricity to generate the hydrogen from the water. And again, what's our byproduct? Water. All right, and Bob, you know, Bob drove down in a hybrid car from, he actually drove up in a hybrid car here from St. Louis. He got 68 miles to the gallon. Now, my van, I get about 18. And I'm going in my head, I'm calculating how much he, how much, you know, he'd use four gallons of gas after a couple hundred miles. I went, wow, <laughs> that won't even get me, like, even to the next town where I live. So, uh, again, this is a wonderful reaction. I love hydrogen and oxygen as a reaction because there's so many things you can do with it. You can do labs with it, you can do demos with it, and you can do a lot of different demos in a variety of ways. Thank you.